Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over setup and the basics of how to play Lost Ruins of Arnak and then follow up with a solo playthrough. So down at the table, this is a worker placement deck building game for one to four players, where we'd be exploring the island, going up on our research track to get victory points, and whoever has the most victory points will win. I'll be setting up and playing a solo game here, so we're going up against an AI. And just note, this game does take up a lot of table space, so this board is a, I can't even reach all the way up there. And there is a supply track that is supposed to go below this, but um, this basically just holds resources that I can have off camera and I'll have this sitting up here. So the first thing for setup, we want to grab all the artifact cards, which are going to be these blue ones here and shuffle that deck. And there is a spot for them at the top row, um, but since I can't reach it, I'm going to keep those off to the side. So we've got these shuffled. This game does go five rounds, so we have this to track our rounds. That starts at the one, and then one of our artifacts will go face up there. So we have a purchase cost, its ability to give us victory points at the end of the game, and our cards we can play either for the ability on the card or to travel. And then we have a bunch of fear cards that goes in the top center up there. And then we get all our item cards, which will be the brown cards. And we'll give them a shuffle and place five of those up top. So one, two, three, four, and five. Since I'm not using that top row, I'm going to zoom in a bit more. Then on our board, we have a spot for level one areas and level two. Um, what we're gonna do is take each of these idols, kind of shuffle those up, our level twos is gonna get one face down and one face up. So they're gonna be victory points on one side and the ones that are face up will get a special ability. So like on this one, we can upgrade a token a little bit better. And on this one, gain a token. That one, gain the same one. And a coin. And the rest of these is just going to get one face up, getting a tablet, uh, readying one of our assistants, destroying a card, getting another tablet, upgrade a token, gaining a, a token, a tablet, and readying one of our characters. And in solo in a two-player game, we're going to block off all the spaces with two boots on it. So we can only have one worker at each of these lower areas. Then a research track, we have, since we're playing a two-player game, we're going to have two tiles of each of those set up there. Then we'll take the rest of these tiles and randomize those. We'll get two face down here. And then in each of these spots, we'll get one face up. And when we go first person there is going to get that bonus in addition to the reward off to the side. So just flipping those over. And we get both of our research tokens for the AI, just their magnifying glass that starts down at the bottom. Then on this board, we're going to take all the assistants Give them a shuffle, then make three stacks of four. So the top one on each stack is going to be available for purchase. So starting in with this one, so it's a free action. Get either a token or a movement to that area. This one is going to reduce the cost of our resources or things we can purchase up in the top row. And this one is just gain a tablet. And also they have a flip side. You can see what they provide on the other one. So on this side, we get a tablet. On the other side, we'll get a tablet and a coin to use. Then we'll take all of our level one locations and shuffle them. Then all of our monsters and randomize those a little bit. and our level two locations. So for the solo game, we're gonna take your player board and put it on the gray side tent. So it's got a spot for where it's gonna get some of its idols, where we hold its uh, 
where it determines what it's gonna do, monsters and cards it purchases. So in making this, basically all the blank ones are ones that doesn't have green or red at the top, they will always go in. Then the greens are gonna be the easier ones and there's a stack of red ones that's gonna make the game a little harder. Uh, but I'm just going all green on this one to go over the basics of the game. And the arrows on the back will determine if there is a choice to be made, whether it's left or right. And the AI is going first, and it's going to take the six other meeples left in the game. So I'll be playing as red, so I'll get the player board on the normal side. Uh, we start with a coin and a compass. We'll grab our four red cards and then two fear cards and shuffle those together. And to start the game, we will draw five cards. So we're getting two fear, two funding, and an exploration. So real quick on the basics of play with what we can do with our cards. Basically, we have an ability on the card or we can use these to travel. So these locations here let us know uh, what card we need for travel. So basically, we have a boot to go there, or we can spend a car or a boat to go to a boot location. Um, there are airplanes, which will are wilds that can go anywhere, or you can spend two coins to basically get an airplane for movement to these different locations. For our regular items, they can be played for their main ability or movement, and of course down here, cost and victory points. And when you purchase those, they go to the bottom of your deck. Artifacts, when you purchase them, they immediately go into play. You get the ability for free. Next time we go to play them, you have to spend a tablet to get that ability. So you've got the purchase, victory points, and then the uh, location for traveling. So as for the actions you can take on your turn, uh, you get one main action, and then you can take any number of free actions, so anything with a lightning bolt on it. So you can dig at a site to use its effect. So to dig at a site, you need to discard a card for the movement. So if I wanted to go down here, basically I can play a boot or any of these other symbols because basically the hierarchy allows you to spend an airplane to use the car or the boat or any of the three to go to a boot or you can spend two money to get a higher pilot to help with your movement. And when you go to a site, you'll gather the resources that are located there. Your next action is to discover a new tile. So I still need to spend for movement. So discard a card to move there. I'll gather this and along with the resource and then to go face down on my tile. We'll take the top card here and flip it over. We'll go ahead and get the resources. And then a monster is also gonna come out. And if you're still there at the end of the turn, when you return back the monster, you're going to grab a fear card. This also shows you the resources it takes to get rid of that uh, monster. And it's the same thing up here, uh, doing the same thing. You just draw from a different stack. So I'll go ahead and reshuffle these. Along with the site. So another action is overcoming a guardian. So on a site where you have one of your characters, spend the resources you need to uh, take that out. And of course they are all worth five victory points and they do have special abilities that you can do on that. Uh, buy an item by getting its cost. When you purchase an item, it goes on the bottom of your deck. Buy an artifact, uh, which goes immediately into play. You can play it and then it'll get shuffled at the end of the turn and go on the bottom of your deck. Play a card from your hand for its effect. Research, you can pay whatever's next up in line to move yourself up. As you move up, if you're the first one there, you get a tile and depending on what token goes in there, you'll get a reward off to the side. And your journal can never go past your magnifying glass. So basically you're doing research here and this is writing it in uh, your book. So they can be on the same space, but it can the book can never go past that. And you can take a pass action, basically saying you're done for the turn. Then you'll set the board by returning all your meeples or archaeologists back to your board. Uh, if there was a monster in that, you'll gain a fear. Shuffle all the cards in your play area. Put them on the bottom of your deck. Refresh your assistance. So if you used any of those, 
uh, you can uh, turn them back up and you get assistance once you get your journal in these two areas is how you pick those up. Advance the card row, you'll exile the cards uh, on both sides of the staff, move the staff over and then put in enough artifacts to fill in the row and start a new round, uh, drawing up to five cards. So that is the basics of the game there. So the AI is controlled by these, flip a token over and it's gonna show you what they're gonna do, very simple. Uh, basically they're gonna go out and just block areas that we have, buy some artifacts and items and move up the track. All right, so we are ready to start the game here, starting with our competitor. So he wants to go ahead and buy a artifact. So he'll add the war mask here and we will replace that with some traders coins. And for our turn, I kind of want to get started on the research track. So we are going to spend that for movement to go to this location. We need to play a card from our hand to gain a jewel. We'll go ahead and play fear and gain the resource. And back over here, he's gonna go block us at the best spot for tablets, which is right there. Then I wanna go get an arrowhead, so I'm gonna spend a boat, which is good enough for the boot movement, to go over here to get the arrowhead. And then he wants to block us from getting gems, nowhere for him to block us, so done. Then for us, we're going to bring our magnifying glass in here, spending a gem. That's going to get us a coin. Over here, he's going to block us or the best spot for getting gold. Then we're going to spend the arrowhead and a compass to bring that on. That's going to allow us to get in an assistant. And of these up here, I think I want this one so we can immediately use him as a free action to get a tablet, and we will. And then up here, since we're on the first turn, it's going to go build a level one temple with a monster. Coming in at the further spot over here. So we'll put that there. Brings in this location, which will get some on a gold and two tablets. And the monster showing up takes four money to defeat. So we're gonna use that to get a coin, then spend three coins to pick up an automobile, which will go on the bottom of our deck. And here, I want to block us from getting compasses. We don't have anything left to do other than grab a coin. So we will pass. Well, I guess first, got a horse that comes out. We could use that coin up there to purchase something, but we're not going to. So we are done for the turn. So there, he wants to go up the research track. The arrow shows he wants to start in on the left. Then he's going to get rid of one of the assistants. Also the one on the left from the higher areas. So this guy or assistant is gone. Then wants to block this area, which already is blocked. Wants to buy an item, buying the cheapest one to the left, which will be this one. And those move down and it's replaced with a brush. And then wants to destroy a monster and it has one to destroy. If there wasn't a monster that it could destroy, it goes up on a research track. And instead gets rid of this guardian, which is five points for it. And that's the end of the first round. So then we're gonna return all of our explorers and if they're pulled from a spot with a guardian, they'll get a fear card for us, not the AI. So we get our people back. 
and shuffle all the cards in our play area and put them on the bottom of our deck. Hard to shuffle just a few cards. Refresh our assistance. Exile the two cards next to the moon staff. Then we move the staff over, refill it with two new artifacts, runes of the dead, and some mortar. And solo, we don't pass the starting token, but we will draw five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. And that's what we have to start our next turn. So for the AI, shuffle its uh, tokens here to see what it's gonna end up doing. And it's going to go explore level one spot. And that goes there. No monster on this one. So I definitely want a gem. So we're gonna use that for our movement. Then we have to play a card without its effect to get that. And then it is going after an artifact. What's the cheapest one to the right? Brings out some ancient wine. Then I'd like an arrowhead. So for movement. And we'll go ahead and use him to get another tablet. No reason not to. Then here, once an item. We'll be getting the large backpack. Comes out with some sturdy boots. So here we only have one option to go up. So we're going to spend a tablet and an arrowhead. Since we're the first one there, we're gonna pick up a compass and a reward is another compass. And over here, well, to kill a monster, none for it to kill, so it's going up the research track. And it wants to go right, which works for us because we want to spend a gem now. To go up here, which is going to get us a coin and another assistant. So the first one gets us two coins, second one reduces our cost up there by one on each. The other one, either a compass or a boat for movement. We're gonna go the money route and go ahead and spend him for two coins. Then up here, it's moving up again. So it's gonna deny us from getting a, drawing a card and remove um, the one from the highest stack is its first priority. So that one goes away. Not that it matters, we can't get any more here, but there are some abilities that will let us use those. So what we're gonna do is free actions, use those to get three compasses. For our main action, spend three. To purchase a mortar, so that's gonna let us banish a card and gain two money. We're gonna banish the fear. And get two coins. Now it gets replaced with a guardian's crown. And over here, just gonna banish a spot where we get a gem. None of those popping up. And then we're gonna spend four money to get a horse. So draw a card, coin, and get a compass. And that's replaced with an airdrop. And it wants to block the best spot with the coin, which is up here. Um, for our turn, 
Let's see. I think we will spend two money to pick up a grappling hook. So for this one, uh, we play a card for no effect to draw a card and banish a card. And that comes out with an army knife. And blocking tablets. And for our turn, there's really nothing we can do, so we're passing. We are done. There it wants to block another spot that it can't. And it's going to finish up with blocking this area. And get all the meeples back. Shuffle these and put them on the bottom of our deck. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, the new cards we've purchased, great, and fear that we'll be using that to get rid of here in a bit. Exile some cards, so no more brush. Move that down. Got a coconut flask and some trader scales. These guys get refreshed and I'll shuffle this. All right, next round. Want to block the best spot for arrowheads. None up there. And I really need some arrowheads. Bummer. So we're going to use him to get two coins. Use him to get a tablet. Use our grappling hook. So we have to play a card for no effect to draw a card to an automobile, then we banish a card, which will be that. Then doesn't like us getting compasses. Then we'll play a horse to draw a card and get a coin and compass. So drawing into exploration, coin and compass, and then buying an artifact or getting one. Uh, lowest one to the left. Replaces with an ornate hammer. Then we're going to use this to move to this location, which will let us draw a card, get a coin and a tablet. And it's going to respond with it wants to kill a monster. And since it can't, it's going to move up on this track to the furthest right denying us an upgrade token. And then we're gonna discover a new site over here. So we need to spend a boat for the movement and three compass tokens. And our worker goes up here. We pick this up, which lets us upgrade. So we can take this to turn it into an arrowhead. And our site. We get a fear card, a compass, and a jewel. And we find a monster, a little scorpion guy. And we want to prevent a good spot with money. Always goes to the most northern. Then we want to defeat this thing, so we need to play a card and skip its effect, a compass and an arrowhead. Fortunately, I wanted to move up, but I want to take care of this thing. So it's going to get us five victory points, or sometime as a free action, we can draw a card. And over here, it's getting an item. Furthest to the right. And replaces with a parrot. Um, we're going to go ahead and use this as an instant action to cover up a victory point at the end game to get an arrowhead. And then spin two tablets in an arrowhead. 
to go further up on this track, which gets us a compass. And over here, it's blocking uh, this area. Then we're going to spend two coins to get a parrot. So discard a card to get a jewel. And replace that with a flask. And there, since we're in round three, level one site with a monster. It's going here. Has one of those. So that's the site coming out. And the monster or guardian. And our free actions, we're going to get two compasses and a coin. And then pass her turn. So the AI finishes up. It's going to come down here and block that area. And then move up on the track. And take out the highest stack. And since it doesn't tell us the way, we look at the bottom one, furthest one to the left. All right, we'll get our people back. Shuffle our cards. One, two, three, four, and five. Go ahead and shuffle these up. Exile some cards. So a sundial and a passage shell. And we're ready for our next turn. So it's a block a good spot to get a compass. Furthest north is up here and that's a good place to get a gem or was at one time. We're going to go ahead and use that to draw a card. And use that boat. We're going to come over here to get us a compass and a arrowhead. And it blocks getting tablets. And we're going to spin that for movement. Draw a card. Get a coin and a tablet. Then we're in round four. So it's going to a up here, furthest to the right. It's a coin that goes face down. Ooh, nice place to get a gym next turn, maybe. And no monster. All right, for our turn, we're going to spend two compass tokens to get the sundial so we can get two tablets there. Or pass to gain that, but we're not. We want the two tablets. Got a decorated horn. And then they want to go to a spot giving out some money. Then we're going to spin two tablets and an arrowhead to move up here. And that's going to let us upgrade our assistance. And when we do that, we ready them. So we're going to upgrade this one and spend it to get a coin and a tablet. And stops getting arrowheads. All right, we're going to use a grappling hook using this card for no effect to draw a card and exile a card. And 
And up here, wants an item. And replaces it with a gold pan. So my intent going here was to destroy that. But it looks like I'm gonna be a tablet short. We're gonna play our horse to draw a card and get a coin and a compass. Getting fear. And up here, it's preventing us from getting a gem. So we use the parrot, play a card with no effect to get a gem. And going up the resource track to the left. And getting rid of that one. And we'll play the mortar to banish a card or exile it and get two coins. And over here, once an artifact, cheapest one this way. Places with a treasure chest. Then we'll use our automobile to get two compass tokens. Then we're gonna spend four tokens to draw a card and get a coin. And that gets replaced with an inscribed blade. And then it wants to kill a monster. It's not at a spot where it can, so it goes up on the track. We'll use that for a coin. Then we're gonna spend a gem and a tablet to move up, banish a card and get a compass. Let's see, what do we wanna banish out of all this? Get rid of some funding. Then spend the same thing. To move this up, let's just upgrade one of our tokens, which is gonna ready it. Use that to get three coins. And pass our turn. So unfortunately, we're gonna pick up a fear when he comes back. Go ahead and shuffle these up. And shuffle these and draw five. Two, three, four, five. Get these guys readied. Exile some cards and get ready for the last round here. We got a serpent idol and a guiding stone. All right, last round. Want to block getting gems. So much for that plan. All right, we're gonna spin that for the movement. Go here, draw a card, get a coin and a tablet and an automobile. Then it's blocking a good money spot. And free action, use that to get two compass tokens. Then we're gonna spin the airplane. So we can go, we'll just go to this spot. It's gonna get us a tablet. Along with another tablet and an arrowhead. And the monster takes two compasses and arrow ahead. Then they want to kill a monster. No monsters at its spot, so researching. Actually, in the fifth round, it's not doing anything. So we will spend two compass and an arrowhead 
to get that. And then it wants an item. Only has one option. Replaces with some rope. We'll go ahead and use him for three money. And him for a money. And a tablet. And we've got to spend a tablet to use this card, to draw a card and get a money. And over here, fifth round doesn't do anything. All right, so we use a grappling hook, playing a card, to draw a card, and destroy a card. And over here, it wants an artifact. Getting a staff. Then we're gonna start spending some money, I guess. Well. We'll put that up there to spend the money to get a jewel. Then we're gonna spend the money in that jewel to move this up, which gets us a compass. Then they want to block arrowheads. Then we're going to play a card for no effect to get a jewel. And that wants to block us from getting tablets. Then we'll spend a coin and the jewel to move up here, which gets us three compass tokens. And then it's going up, so made it all the way. It's just gonna get rid of one of these tokens and get rid of that assistant. All right, then we'll play the mortar. We've gotta play a tablet, gets us two coins. And then that just wants to block us from getting any more compass tokens. And then it's all about us spending money from here on out. Although we could get a fear card. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll spend two compass tokens. We'll get a fear card. And a jewel. Then we can spend the jewel in a compass. move up here, which is going to get us to draw a card into more fear. Hunting arrows. All right, so we're going to get that now. So that costs two. Allows us to research with a discount of either an arrowhead or two tablets. We'll take the discount of the arrowhead, paying two tablets which will let us draw a card. And we can purchase a artifact at a discount. Unfortunately, none of them cost two. We only have one there. And we'll play our horse to draw a card. We don't have any to draw, but we still get the coin and token. So two, that's not going to get us anything. So we're just going to buy every item that comes up. Actually, that was silly. We'll hold off on getting that. So we don't have these yet. We'll spend two coins to get that. Goes to the bottom of our deck and that replaces with a hot air balloon, which costs two coins. We'll spend that which replaces with a watch, we'll spend a coin, which replaces with, ooh, a dog, we'll spend three coins. Which replaces with that, we'll spend four coins. That's expensive for one point.
Places with that for two coins. One coin for a trial. And we've got three money left. We'll let that sit just in case. All right, now we draw a coin or draw a card, get a coin and a token or compass. Then use a rope to play a card and draw two cards. Hot air balloon and a watch. And we'll use the watch for two more money. And then start buying things again, spending three. Which replaces with that torch for two. And can't afford the ostrich, although that would be nice to have. And all that matters here is getting these back, not getting any more damage. So now it goes on to final scoring. So that stash of money we got came in helpful. So we'll start with him. Basically, we just go through counting up the different stuff. So for investigation or the research, I got 23 points. We have these research tokens there, didn't get any. And then for its idols, end up getting three, six, nine, 11, and 13. Monsters has one for five. And then the cards it ended up with, Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So a nice even 50. And then for us, uh, we ended up both of these on the same level. That gets us 20. Of course, we didn't get any tokens there. Our points here, we got three, six, nine, 13. Monsters, we ended up with two, so that's going to be 10 points. And then cards is where hopefully we excelled. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine. Well, actually, we count those separately on the sheet, so we ended up with two negative points in there. I think that was it. All right, so one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-five points. And that brings us up to a total of sixty-six. So that's the basics of how to play Lost Ruins of Arnak. As always, hope you enjoyed this playthrough. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.